Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining me today. So I'm very excited to have a casual chat with all of you. So uh, today I would like to share with you some of the lessons I learned as an early career faculty. Let me first introduce my journey in this academic world. So I finished my Master of Philosophy study at the Chinese University of Hong Kong in 2013. Then I joined MIT as a PhD student working with Antonio Taraba and Odi Oliva in computer vision. So we have done many interesting work together, such as building up the large scale scene recognition database called Places. And also we have done a lot of work uh, on network interpretation. So I had a very wonderful five years at MIT. So I graduated uh, from MIT in 2018. After that, I joined the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Yes, I come back to Hong Kong and become a faculty member there. So I've been with uh, information engineering department at the CUHK for three years so far. Um, so the first lesson I would like to share with you is to strengthen and broaden your research on territory. Um, so rather than publishing a lot of papers as an early career um, faculty members, um, I think it's more important to build a clear agenda to connect all your research together. You know, when I was a PhD study at a, uh, when I was a PhD student uh, at MIT, so I work on visual scene understanding with uh, my advisor Antonio Taraba. So I think he will also give a talk at this workshop. Um, so definitely you should check it out. Um, so we work together on many different topics. So on scene understanding, we build up the places, uh, ADE 20K. Um, we also done this network interpretation master, um, class activation mapping, and also uh, many uh, common net uh, future visualization works. So at that time, I was still a PhD student. So I have to listen to my advisor and uh, to find some mutual interest. So definitely I, can, I couldn't work on some, some project that's uh, not interest my advisor. Um, but right now I am a um, um, principal investigator, which means I need to need um, my own research agenda. So I would like to go beyond my previous uh, research work so, you know, I previously I work on computer vision and uh, the scene understanding and uh, network interpretation. But as a, as a principal investigator now, so I built many different topics uh, under my research agenda, uh, such as uh, generative modeling, um, reinforcement learning, machine autonomy. So, there are many interest topics that interest me. So, then the issue is how can we um, move into uh, new directions. So you may have one or two projects in some directions. Um, it's just that you have some students that are interested in exploring those directions. Um, so you may done a lot of different topics, uh, but I think it's very important to put all the research um, projects into some structures. Um, so you can put some structures here. So here is how I interpret and organize uh, my research. So here I have done many different uh, research and I'm, I'm interested in many different topics. So I will put them together and build a structure like this. So the bottom layer you can see is, uh, is the foundations and the methodologies. So here is the interpretable machine learning and the human AI interaction and human centric AI. Those are the foundations that are relevant to all the research projects uh, I have been doing. So they, they should be the foundation that can distinguish uh, my research uh, from other uh, res uh, the research of other researchers. So on top of that, so I may have different uh, research directions. So previously I ha only have the image classification. You know, I work on the scene understanding. So the scene classifications in parsings, um, but now I building another two directions that's uh, quite different from my previous research uh, interest as a PhD student. So first I have the image uh, generation, which is uh, we would like to look at the visual scene understanding from this uh, uh, viewpoint of generative models. So if we can generate the image, so we can have a deeper understanding uh, 
what's going on inside the image. The third one is uh, uh, called uh, interactive uh, environment learning. So compared to the previous uh, two directions that use a fixed uh, data set, right now we can have an interactive uh, simulation environment. So how agent can explore uh, um, this environment by interacting with them will be a very interesting direction. And so on top of the three directions, I can have many different uh, applications. So each of my students can work on one of the uh, applications such as um, image classification. Um, so there are scene classifications in parsing, video understanding, on image generation. So students can work on image editing, image processing, and also try to interpreting uh, the GAN models. Uh, on top of the uh, interactive environment, and learning, I can work on self-driving, uh, self a uh, safe exploration, and the uh, multi-agent system. So many different applications can be down in directions. So after I have these structures, so I have this uh, foundation that can distinguish uh, my research. I also have many different research directions. On each direction, so I can have many uh, applications. So in that sense, I really have already stretched my research territory. So I, I can work on different topics, but they all link back to the foundations. So here I would like to give you uh, some examples. How can they link together? So right now we have first have the uh, human AI interaction. So when we talk about human AI interaction to the first part, uh, the image classification. So it will be an example like this that we, we want um, better interpret uh, the classification model. So we can generate some heat map and then help human to understand the decision-making process uh, of the AI models. So we can better uh, explain and uh, uh, that diagnosis and uh, what's going on inside the neural network and their mistakes and uh, uh, their decision-making. The middle one, the application of human AI interaction in image generation. So, you know, we have this amazing generative model that can generate uh, very realistic images. Uh, the issue is how can we put human in the loop uh, to create uh, new contents? So this is one of the recent work that uh, uh, we developed some method to uh, unsupervised uh, learning of the stable dimensions inside the generative model. Then we can put human in the loop for this uh, image generation to so have this interactive uh, AI content creation. So for the third part, interactive uh, uh, environments. So when we apply the human AI interaction to this in, in interactive environment learnings, uh, so we have this recent work uh, called human in the loop on reform learning. So we can use a human to do the demonstrations, how to drive the car uh, to the agents. So after many uh, episodes, the agent can learn to navigate inside the environment without the invention of the humans. So basically we can have this human AI interaction under this uh, uh, interactive environment learning. Um, so you can see here this human uh, AI interaction could be the common topics that shared across all the different uh, applications that can link back to my uh, research uh, agenda and my research core research interest. So that is the first lesson to link all your research together and build a research agenda. The second uh, lesson I would like to share is um, the rejected um, behind the accepted. Because a lot of the case, um, people pay attention to the paper accepted. So you already published. Um, so people will say, oh, I published a lot of papers. But uh, that is because I have also a lot of uh, rejected papers. Um, so here I would like to show you the rejected paper behind the accepted papers. So I think that is also a story I learned that uh, um, it's not easy to get paper published. So you have to better handle the rejections, uh, both physically and emotionally. Um, so one example is here is uh, the GenForce. So it's a research initiative uh, in my group that uh, uh, pioneered the generative modeling. So I list all the papers at this uh, GenForce uh, link. So from the whole page, you can see um, for the GenForce, we are pretty productive. So we have many papers published. So we have four CVPR papers, two of them are oral papers, and one ECCV and one TPAMI and one IGCV journal papers. 
So a lot of papers, people sometimes are amazed by how productive uh, our group uh, is. Um, but the truth is, the journey is not easy at all. Actually, all the papers have been rejected once. So let me show you. So let, let me tell you one by one. So the first paper is this uh, uh, CVPR 2020. So done by Yujun and uh, Jingjing. So this is one of the earliest works that uh, try to uh, interpret the latent um, steerable concept inside the generative model. So this paper has been rejected um, by ICCV. So which means we have done this work more than six months ago before we put this paper on archive when we, after we resubmit to CVPR. Um, the second one, the CVPR on 2020, so done by Jin Jing. So this paper also rejected um, once by Neurops um, 2019. So I still remember that when this paper uh, get rejected, so Jin Jing spent a lot of time to rewrite, rewrote a lot of content and redo all the experiments, then we resubmit. So it get uh, uh, accepted. So the first two papers have been rejected once and we resubmit to CVPR and get accepted. Uh, the third one, so I actually really like this paper. So the semantic hierarchy uh, emerges inside the deep generative representations. So if you pay attention to my previous talks, so in my talk, I, I, I really like including uh, this paper because uh, um, this, is, this work is more like a mirror uh, work of my previous work on this uh, object detector emerge, um, which is a ICOR papers I published uh, like five or six years ago that we discovered a lot of emergent uh, concept inside the model trained for scene classification. So that is a mirror paper we show that um, there are also a lot of uh, uh, concepts emerge inside the generative representations. So unfortunately, this paper never get published at the adding conference. So it rejected uh, from Europe's um, 2019 and also rejected uh, from uh, ICLR. Um, so after the second uh, rejection, uh, so we were very frustrated by this. So we just say, oh, we should submit uh, to the journal. So just resubmit it to the journal. I think after two rounds of uh, a major reverse version, and finally it got, get accepted. After I think two years, um, we finished this work. Um, so it's very time consuming for this. Um, the fourth one, so this paper, unfortunately, is still under uh, revision. So this paper uh, done with uh, uh, Pong and Deli. So get rejected from three conferences uh, in Europe, ICOR, ICML, and uh, then finally we give out and resubmit uh, to some journal. So right now it's after two rounds of major revisions. Right now, luckily, it, right now it's in a minor revision. So the paper have been in reviewing for, I think, more than uh, almost two years now, right? So we have a lot of rejections. Um, this one, so this ECCV, Indomega inversion, so get rejected from CVPR. And uh, um, this journal paper, oh, this is a journal extension of the uh, interface scan, our first uh, work. Um, so luckily, this is the only one that gets uh, uh, first wrong. We, ha we had uh, a minor revision, so get in for sure. Um, so this is the only lucky one. So the recent two works, so this one, CIFA. Um, so this is a really nice work that we have this un unsupervised discovery of the latent semantics uh, get rejected, rejected from Europe's and also the re most recent one on uh, the GH feeds uh, get rejected from Europe's. So the two papers got rejected from Europe's, um, but uh, got in uh, CVPR as an oral paper. So you can see each one of the papers on Gen4 actually being rejected uh, once. So it's a very pumpy uh, journey. So so a lot of rejections. So here we have more rejections than that. Uh, so, you know, life is full of rejections. So you have to keep calm and uh, move on. You see here, um, actually have all rejections at a lot of conferences, such as we, uh, we have nice submissions and the nice submission all get rejected from Europe's 2020. 
and uh, all rejection from ICML on 2020 and all uh, rejection from 2021 uh, 21, and also uh, recent, this is my whole conference, ICCV, um, the work from my lab got all rejections. So unfortunately, so from this example, you can see as a, a early career uh, faculty members. So I have to deal with these rejections uh, emotionally and physically. Um, so, so you have to deal with this. So it's a, it become more like a routine nowadays because you know, a lot of submissions at the AI conferences and the quality of the reviewers varies a lot. So, so you have to uh, try many times um, it's not necessarily say your work is not good in, is not in high quality, just as a random reviewing process. Um, so, so in a lot of the case, I feel I'm more like a cheerleaders uh, for my students, try to better encourage them, don't be being frustrated about the rejections. Uh, it just is this uh, uh, randomness of the reviewing um, process. I think that's also very important uh, if you are a uh, 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 a researcher, you have a, a faculty members, you have to also oh, keep encouraging your students. Don't pay too much attention to whether these people reject it or accept it. You should pay more attention to doing good works. Okay, I think those are the two lessons I would like to share with you. Uh, lastly, I would like to uh, say thanks to all my students. So it's, uh, it is a, a joyful experience working with all those talented uh, students. Uh, so I would like to thank all of them. Uh, so here are some final words. So I think it's very important um, to enjoy your academic uh, journey. So you have to be uh, really passionate about uh, this path if you would like to become a researcher in this field. Uh, so here is the last piece of uh, um, updates. So a new life update. So I will join UCLA Computer Science um, early next year. So I'm very grateful for all the uh, support I received over the years. Uh, so I will build a new lab uh, on human-centric AI for vision and uh, autonomy. So I call this a Neva lab. So I'm also looking for uh, top students um, to join me to pioneer this direction. Um, okay, so that's it. Hope you enjoy um, this workshop and uh, also you should check out the other uh, talks in this workshop. Bye-bye.